What is up you guys? Welcome, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Rihanna Cache. I'm 19 years old, a content creator and college student. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing my... I'm going to be doing the story time that I promised I would tell you guys about my stay at the hotel I was in in my last vlog. If you haven't checked it out already, definitely go look at that. But... Um, I'm also going to be doing that while I am painting. I set up my little area, we got the paint, the brushes, all that, and it wouldn't be a random vlog without Starbucks. Got a pumpkin spice latte, and I'm trying the pumpkin muffin for the first time. So, I don't want this video to be incredibly too long, so let's get right into it. I feel like they definitely made this coffee wrong. It's a little bitter. Pretty good. Mm, I think this is the one I'm gonna do. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So, to get into the story time, I recently stayed at Double Tree by Hilton uh, in Niagara Falls. Now, before we get there, I stayed at this hotel because one. This is my finals week, so I literally have, I did an exam today, I did an exam yesterday and have one more tomorrow. But my last day of class is technically Thursday, and I knew a couple months prior that this would be my finals week because that's what it said in the academic calendar, this is finals week. So I was like, I know me, I'm going to be stressed out during this week, I know that for facts. This blue is a little darker than I need it to be, but... I'm like, I know I'm going to be stressed during that week, so what can I do to kind of do a little getaway so I'm not stressed out? And I was like, why not stay at a hotel? And at first I thought staycation, you know, find a little hotel that's local, whatever. And I was like, eh, I like to travel and I want to branch out. And I was watching so many solo travel vlogs at the time that I got the idea in my head, like, you need to get better at solo traveling so you can do that more often and more frequently and stuff like that. Which I talked about in my last vlog, um, separation anxiety and solo travel and all that other stuff. Um, this is a nice one. So, I was like, for your first solo travel trip, let's do something. But let's not be too adventurous. Let's do something close, you know, something nearby. If I need help, someone can come get me. Um, so I ended up going with Niagara. Because it's not that close. What I, I mean, it's not that far. Whatever. And I also thought about it and I was like, you know what, this is the perfect trip because I can go around Black Friday, go to the outlet and do some shopping because our malls here kind of suck. I don't do in-person shopping like ever anymore because it's just no reason. I don't see no point to it. I just do online. But I'm like, you know, this could be a reason to go out, have a little fun, whatever. A couple months prior, maybe a month prior to my trip, I booked the hotel online at the Hilton's website and it says adult 18 plus and you enter the quantity of people that are going. It was just me so I said one adult 18 plus and I'm actually a Hilton Honors member. I don't remember when I became a member but I looked at the website and it turned out I was a member. So I signed in and asked me for my birthday. I entered my own personal card information, my birthday, all the other stuff to book the room and the room was booked around... So I booked the room in October. So the book ha the room was booked for about a month before I even arrived there. So boom. The time comes. And at first, I was thinking about calling and canceling because of course I have separation anxiety and then I started getting last minute jitters. I'm like, oh, I can't do it. And then I was thinking like, oh, it's Thanksgiving weekend and you shouldn't go this weekend, you should reschedule. But I got a non-refundable room. So there is no rescheduling, I had to go. So the time comes, I pack up in the morning, I'm excited, I drive about an hour and a half, and uh, you guys saw in the vlog, if you haven't, go to definitely check it out, but you guys saw in the vlog that I traveled about an hour and a half. I go to the outlet first, because I'm like, why not just go shopping first, because you know, you can't check into hotels until like 3 o'clock, I don't know why that is, but... I couldn't check until like 3, so I was like, why not waste my time and go shopping? It's Black Friday. Let me see some sales, whatever. I end up picking up dinner as well. My mom is going to kill me if I don't get this paint up off the table. <laughs> Hopefully it comes out. <laughs> but yeah, I go shopping. I grab what I need, whatever. 
and I head to the hotel. Everything is going fine. Everything is grand, whatever. Until I get to the desk, and the girl's like, "Hey, how are you?" Da da da. I go to check in. She's like, "Wait a minute, you're underage." And I'm like, "What do you mean?" Now, mind you, I was looking at websites and stuff like that, making sure I was good to go because I know not all hotels accept people my age, 19 and whatnot. But it asked me my age on the website. It uh, let me become a member. It says you can become a member if you're 18 plus. Like, so I'm pretty sure I thought I was a green to go sign. Like, yeah, we can stay here. But then she's like, you're underage. And I'm looking at her like, so what, what are we going to do about it? She's like, well, I can get my manager, but um, I don't know if you can stay here or not. Now, it would have been real unfortunate, but I definitely would have had to drive back an hour and a half. I told her I was traveling and, you know, it was going to be inconvenient for me to go back to where I just came from or whatever. But, you know, if it, if it really came down to it, had they asked me to leave and like gave me a refund and whatnot, I would have left. But the manager or supervisor rather comes up and he's like well i don't want you to um have to travel all the way where you came from whatever i'm gonna give you the room we're gonna accommodate you now i'm saying this a lot nicer than he was he was kind of very condescending very rude about it like he was doing me a huge favor and i should just be so thankful for him and um he was telling things saying things like next time i won't accommodate you if you come back here um, before you're 21 we will kick you out and like it was really rude you didn't have to get all aggressive like that um, so I was feeling some type of way my brother was actually on the phone at the time and he was feeling some type of way he said put me on speaker because I don't like the way he's talking to you and I'm like it's cool I got it. I'm handling it whatever so that was the first incident and like I understand like I was grateful to be accommodated whatever but I feel like he didn't have to be as rude as he was about things, especially considering the fact you definitely could have just gave me my refund and I could have went on my merry way, but you guys wanted my money, so that's why I didn't get a refund, because y'all wanted y'all wanted my money, so y'all was going to keep me there regardless. But, anywho, I ended up getting my stuff, I went up to my room, you know, started doing the work, so whatever. My camera is blinking, hopefully it doesn't die before this is over. So pretty much... As I'm staying at this hotel, I'm literally just minding my business. I barely leave my room but to warm up my food, like legit minding my business. And it is while I'm minding my business that I go downstairs to warm up my dinner and everything goes downhill from there. As I'm downstairs warming my dinner, I come back upstairs. Next thing you know, I can't open my door. And I'm like, what is going on? Why is this happening to me? It would happen to me while I'm traveling alone. So now my nerves are a little shaken because, again, I am traveling alone. And now I'm, like, a little nervous because I'm like, what is going on? Am I about to be traffic? Like, is it some type of ploy? Is it because I'm young? Like, what's going on? So I go down to the front desk. I tell them my door is opening. They give me another key. I come back upstairs. I try to unlock the door. And... It's not working still. And the supervisor from the desk, same guy that was being really rude to me, he's like, oh, I think you must have left your latch out when you left your room. Uh, I showed you guys in the video like how you can double lock a door or whatever. Um, but he's saying I left that part out and that's why the door isn't open. So basically he's trying to blame me for why this door isn't opening. But I'm like, that's nearly impossible. How could I have opened the door with that out? And it really, he did have me doubting myself for a minute. Like, did I leave it open? Like, was it me? But I'm like, no, Ray. You, you're responsible. You know exactly what happened. And then he was like, unless someone got into your room or you, someone, you invited someone or whatever, trying to say basically like, I'm not alone or whatever, and I'm being a nuisance or whatever the case is. But I'm like, there's no way because every time I leave my room, I would double check that the door was steady and that it was locked because. Last thing I need is somebody breaking into my room while I'm downstairs and then I gotta deal with that. Um, so I'm like, no, no one could have gotten into my room. It's just your door, your lock must be malfunctioning, whatever. So I'm calm for the first like 30 minutes or so, but after that, maintenance is, the guy who's doing my room, he's sweating. He's nervous, like, he's like, can I get this door open? He looks very unconfident about getting this door open. At this point, I've had to eat dinner in the lobby I've had to 
um, walk around the hotel in my pajamas, bonnet and all. It's super embarrassing and then I don't know if it's because of location or whatever, but you know, it's a lot of people of different ethnicity, if you will. Well, you know, it's not a lot of people that look like me there and I'm getting stares and stuff. Like literally one time in the elevator, this woman clutched her husband like I was gonna be like at her or something. I don't know why she did that. I literally, there was no threat in my eyes. I did probably look a little upset because everything was going on, but girl, I'm in my pajamas. I just want to get in my room. Um, but yeah, so I'm super uncomfortable because I'm locked out. I'm about around a bunch of people who don't look like me. I'm in, I'm an hour and a half away from my family, away from home. I'm by myself. Like, you know, there's so much things going through my head at this point. So my anxiety was up. So about an hour into me sitting outside my room, the supervisor comes back up, same guy who had an issue with my age. He's like, hey, do you want a $50 dining credit? Um, I said, no, I'm not hungry. I just ate, I just wanna get into my room. He's like, I understand. You probably wanna get into your room because all your stuff is in there and stuff like that, haha. <laughs> it was like, he was like in a sarcastic joke or something like that, but it was not funny. And he realized it was not funny. He looked nervous. He said, I'm sorry, that's not funny. I'm thinking like, what just happened? And this is where it really goes left. This is where it really had my blood pressure up. He's like, well, can I offer you a drink? And I'm like, I'm not thirsty. No, I mean a drink drink. Like, he said specifically, he exclusively said, like beer or alcohol. And I looked at him like, no. Mind you, you just had a problem with me checking in just yesterday, just a couple hours ago, not even a full 24 hours, about my age. Now you're trying to offer a 19 year old beer and alcohol. It's just weird to me. That had me like on high alert. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Like, cause why are you trying to offer me alcohol? That's just a no. <laughs> That's just a, now you just made me super uncomfortable. Like what kind of establishment is this to offer me alcohol? Even though I am locked down my room, I am stressed, whatever. You should never offer no child, no alcohol. I mean, I'm not a child, but you know, a young adult alcohol that's not of age. And then he tries to offer me a different room and I'm like, I'm not going anywhere because I wanna know when this door opens, you know, my stuff is in there. You know, I don't trust people, people still, whatever. I'm not gonna leave y'all, my laptop was in there, my camera was in there, everything was in there. I had over, you know, thousands of dollars worth of stuff in there. So I'm not leaving until that door is open. I'm here with that door being open. Cause I understand, I understand, whatever. So I'm not gonna say he didn't try to offer me a different room or offer me a meal credit or something, cause he did. But the whole sarcastic jokes and then the offer me the alcohol, crazy. I, they finally get my door open two hours after I had been waiting. I had been sitting on the floor. I got allergies because I'm super like sensitive to stuff and I guess the floor was dusty or whatever. Um, and then maintenance was in my room for an additional hour after they opened the door. So that's three hours worth of like just chaos. And literally after I got into my room, I was like shaking. Like I couldn't control the shaking. I was just nervous. I didn't know what was going on. I told the hotel, I'm like, I need to figure something out because I want to check out tonight. I want to go home. Like I want to leave. Mind you, it was like seven or eight o'clock at night. And that would have been an hour and a half drive home in the dark, in the cold, and it was snowing. My mom convinced me not to. Cause she didn't want me to get next or anything. My emotions was high. I was nervous. I was in shock. <laughs> And it was really cold, snowy, dark outside. But I was prepared to check out that night because, baby, I was nervous. I'm like, I don't trust y'all. Y'all got me out here. Like, But I ended up staying. And then the next morning I checked out. Hagosa Dust is some different man. I guess he's the general manager. No. Hagosa Dust in the morning is some woman. And I'm like, hey, um, I'm here to check out. So yeah, fine. And I was like, also, I would like a full room. She was like, oh, okay, uh, can I ask why? I explained the whole situation to her. So, okay, I understand. And then she tried to give it to me, but she was like, ooh, I can't issue for a full refund because of you paid the non-refundable room or whatever. I guess it's a longer process to that because it comes to like, it goes through the Hilton themselves or whatever, I don't know. But she had no issues. Like, I had no issue giving you a refund, but I just can't do it myself, whatever. You wanna wait for the general manager, he's gonna be here in 15 minutes, or you can, you know, just call headquarters, corporate, whatever. I was like, oh wait. So I waited 15 minutes for this guy to show up. And when I get up there, he calls me up. And well, when he gets there, he calls me up. And then he's like, well, can you explain why you want the refund? I explained. He was like, I can't offer you a full refund. One, because my hotel staff was able to accommodate you. It was your fault that you were underage when you checked in. So that's, I'm not writing that off. 
And the way he said it was so mean. I looked at him like astonished. And he was like, two, um, I do understand that you were locked out of your room for a while. Um, but I can just give you uh, a food, a dining credit or whatever and some points in your account um, for your inconvenience. So basically he was going to offer me about 10,000 points and a dining credit, $50 dining credit. And I was like, mm, that's not enough for me. That's exactly what I said. And he was like, well, that's all I can offer you. Mind you, fifty a $50 dining credit at a Hilton, whatever. Y'all saw I paid $19 for some pancakes and orange juice. Ridiculous, by the way. But $50, what would that have gotten me? <laughs> what would it have gotten me? Plus, I'm leaving, so I'm not going to eat here. So it's like... And then, if you actually do the math, 10000 points or credits on your Hilton account or whatever uh, is not enough. It's not a lot. Basically, it's not even enough to cover one night's worth of room. It was like $12 off a room. I did the math. And I'm like, is that really all my situation is worth to you? And I told you everything that was going on. Also, he tried to gaslight me. I almost forgot. Let's not forget. I told him about the whole situation with the alcohol. He said he probably offered you a drink credit. He didn't offer you alcohol. And I'm like, I literally was like, how would you know? You weren't there. I was like, he said beer or alcohol explicitly. He offered me alcohol. And I'm 19. I'm under. He knows I'm underage because he had such an issue about me checking in. And he kept trying to discredit it. Oh, no, that you must you must have misheard that I trying to gaslight me. No, I know what I heard. And so I was like, well, you're not offering enough for me um, for my inconveniences. This is a, this is unprofessional, to say the least. I was like, I'll just take your card and I can go to corporate. He said, that's fine by me, because I'm not going to sit here and argue with somebody when I already know the answer. If you're not trying to accommodate me, it's just it's wraps. So I call corporate as soon as I get home. And they're like, oh, that's so inconvenient. Da -da. We'll try to handle our situation. We'll find a resolution for you within like two, three days. Three days go by, not two, three. And I called them back because no one's hit me up. They was like, oh, you should have an email. And I knew I received an email from Hilson, but it didn't say anything. It was just saying like, oh, you're silver words now or something. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? He was like, oh, we just did what the general manager asked and we gave you 2,000 uh, credits or whatever. And I'm like, I already told the general manager when I was there, who spoke to me condescendingly, who was rude to me, that 10,000 credits is not enough for the situation. And he was like, he restated the situation to me. And basically what the general manager told them is I was only locked out for a couple of minutes. My jail was locked out for two hours with maintenance and room for an additional hour. And that uh, they never mentioned anything about the alcohol. And it was my fault with the whole check-in situation. So I broke it down to him, explain, your website should have never allowed me to make the uh, reservation if I were underage. You had a whole month to cancel the reservation. Like, oh, something in the system should have clicked. Like, she's 18, she, I mean 19, she can't make the reservation. You say an 18 plus on your website, but then I get there and you're, it's just, yeah. And then um, I also explained how I was locked out longer, how this person the supervisor did offer me alcohol even though it's not included in the case he's like okay that changes things we're gonna review your case again give us about 48 hours it's been 72 hours today and i tried calling today and the phone kept hanging up it kept saying call failed all this other stuff so i don't know where this is gonna head i'm really trying to finish up the story because my camera's been blinking for a hot minute on red but I don't know what's going to happen from here. I don't know if we're going to get lawyers involved, press involved, whatever. But we'll have to see because this is unacceptable. And I mean, some people could think like you're doing too much and you're asking for too much by asking for a full refund. But y'all, my life was literally, I felt like put in danger or whatever. Like I'm literally, I had an anxiety attack, <laughs> an allergy attack because it was dusty on that floor. I was alone and I felt vulnerable and they took advantage of that. They tried to gaslight me and blame it on me for not reading the fine print when I checked in and gaslight me about that man not offering me alcohol when he offered me alcohol. My mom's calling. Hello? Alright, love you. I don't know where I just left off, but yeah. Basically, where we're at right now is we're still trying to look for resolution. I'm not taking $12 off of a room. That's not enough for me. For all this stuff I went through that night, it's not enough for me. I'm ready for anything. I'm ready to lawyer up. I'm ready to take this to the public. I mean, this is the public, but a bigger audience, a bigger platform, if need be, because 
people need to go know what goes on at these hotels these fine establishments that you pay so much for really it is what like let's see that face value i'm a person of color it, it's always been like this and for the foreseeable future it's going to continue to be like that unfortunately if you are a person of color especially a woman traveling alone or whatever it's going to be more complex for you You're probably going to run into more difficulties than other person like they're going to try to take advantage of you even though you spent your dollars the same amount as anybody else's, even though you spent as much as they did on a luxury hotel or whatever, it's still going to be mess. Like, I literally spent $360 on that room, $19 on pancakes, whatever. Regardless of how much I spent, regardless of me contributing to your establishment, you're still going to treat me how you see me, which is a person of color, a female, whatever. So, what I would say, based on this experience, is travel at your own risk, especially as a woman, alone, person of color, whatever, because you will run into some obstacles, some difficulties, and if you can't physically take that, or manage it or handle it well, then it, it could be really stressful and, and not the vacation you're looking for. That, my camera is blinking, that is pretty much the story time, that is what happened. I'm still going to continue to travel. Nobody's going to scare me away from traveling. I just got to be smart about things and plan things ahead of time and things like that. Always stay prepared. You know, always stay prepared. But yeah, <laughs> that is pretty much the video. I'm going to finish painting and maybe I'll film a little bit more of that. And yeah stay tuned for some nice christmas content and some other stuff thank you so much for watching thank you guys for supporting me because my views have definitely went up y'all incredible whatever i love y'all and i'll see you guys next time bye